Hello and welcome to Cat Life, a channel where we live for everything cats. Today we present five professional tips and tricks for taming feral cats. I know we've all been waiting for this one and this is the first of many videos like this from Cat Life on taming. Now, whether you have a wild child at home or if you know it's time to bring in that feral kitty from outside that you've seen struggling, this video will give you several useful tools and strategies to rehabilitate any feral cat into a lap cat. First thing is first, use the right space for the situation. A somewhat friendly stray cat might be okay in a bedroom, but feral cats will climb the walls and basically destroy everything. So keep them in a giant dog kennel or enclosure like shown here until you trust them. It might seem unfair to cage them, but it's for their own good and for everybody's safety. They do keep them in the kennels at the shelter, so it's perfectly fine. And any place is better than the outside with all those dangers. And it's up to us to make them comfortable. You want to put a dirty shirt of yours in the kennel so that it gets used to your smell. The kennel also allows you to work more closely with the cat without it hiding somewhere where you can't catch them. Trust me on this one. The dog kennel might be a little messy sometimes, but it's for the best, at least for the first few weeks. Once you trust the cat, or if it just refuses to do the kennel, then a spare or mostly empty bedroom with the windows out of reach or covered should do. Just make sure that there's no heavy objects that the cat can knock down on itself. Be sure initially with either options that you give the cat a comfy bed and a hiding place or two since cats do find comfort in hiding and you want them to come out and come to you when they're ready. You must have the right tools for any job and taming cats is no different. You'll need a good leather or cut proof pair of gloves that cover up the arms a little. There are several options depending on your budget, but make sure that you get something good and thick. And you might want to get a couple of extra pairs, or at least one extra pair. You're also going to need something to throw in the fire and pet the cat with besides your hands. So get one of those scrub or back scrubbers, at least 16 inches long. Uh, the gloves will sometimes scare them, so the back scrubber allows you to remove the gloves but be careful because cats can strike long distances just like a rattlesnake. Uh, spray the gloves and the scrubber with the calming spray and then approach the cat slow and low and remember very little eye contact and slow blinking with the eyes, your eyes. If the slow and low doesn't work, you can try petting higher or more towards the back. But just kind of experiment and see what works. Uh, each cat is different and you have to be careful not to push too hard, but also not to become too complacent. Uh, it can take several weeks or months for a cat to trust you. Uh, you want to use treats like boiled chicken, uh, wet cat food, uh, cat treats. Uh, since obviously, as we all know, the way to a cat's heart is through its stomach. Um, and in time, uh, it'll begin to trust you. Um, the time it takes just depends on the cat as well as how much time that you can actually spend. Um, try, uh, as we'll talk about in a moment, breaking up the duties and having friends or family come and spend some time with the cat as well. Um, anything you can do, even if it's just a short hello on the way by or if you have a camera, as we'll talk about, just little interactions uh, certainly add up throughout the day. And those little time and effort moments that you spend will certainly pay off later. So just make sure you have the time set aside or you make some time for the animal. And next, you always want to have an escape plan. 
uh, be ready to duck and dodge, cover your face, or just bail out and run away. Um, be sure to keep one hand on the kennel door to close it in a hurry if things do go south. Uh, just make sure you're telling the kitty it's a good kitty. Talk nice. Uh, just don't yell at it. It might be frustrating, but if you have to, leave the room and come back later. Um, it, the cat doesn't know any better, you know. Uh, get some calming spray like the Nature's Miracle or the Jackson Galley Bullocksy, uh, Bully Buster. And just spray it everywhere, like the kennel, the dog crate, uh, any blankets, anywhere. Also get some CBD oil made for pets uh, to mix in the wet food of the really wild ones. You see instructions on the back of each, but I just use the calming spray and a low dose of CBD oil to keep them calm. Also get a video camera. Uh, you want to monitor them and see what they're doing when you're not around. Uh, get the two-way voice so you can talk to them uh, while you're at work or running errands or if they you know need to, some guidance you also want to make sure they have plenty of toys uh, get a realistic squeaky bird toy uh, and a turbo scratcher uh, just something it can learn to play with and beat up uh, toys are important but make sure not to play too rough and of course be careful when other cats are around if you're playing with the feral also, lots of treats and goodies will be essential tools if you want to make friends with the feral feline. Wet, soft, different kinds, different brands. Next, claw covers and anti-bite devices such as the cat muzzle or the dome head cover. Those are for extreme cases or situations where you've got to treat the cat with medicine or maybe trim the nails. Uh, I also use these sometimes when I'm introducing new cats. Uh, if one of them has a history of aggression or if I'm just not sure how the cat's going to react. In the coming weeks, we'll be making more videos on socializing cats and taming ferals and also a video on how to specifically deal with extra wild cats uh, and more in depth. One thing you want to make sure to do is make sure to make this environment the new environment at home as much like the wild as you can so it's not a complete shock with all the smells and sights and sounds. So uh, I always put lots of fake plants and real plants, cat safe plants of course, uh, and just different trees and things in the rescue room. I give all my cats fresh cat grass and fresh catnip regularly throughout the entire year so they get to taste the outdoors anytime they want. And of course, there's some health benefits that come along with that as well. Uh, with the ferals, I do make the litter boxes half litter and a mixture of half dirt and grass shreds and crushed leaves. Uh, they like the smell and it's familiar to them. Make sure to use uh, unscented laundry detergent on any blankets and try to use any uh, of scented uh, things such as cat litter. You want to play videos for the cats, such as birds for cats or outdoor sounds when you're not with them. Most of mine seem to love those birds and squirrel videos on the tablet. Uh, on our Cat Live YouTube channel, we do have videos of bird for cats and, and squirrel for cats as well. So, uh, But there are apps you can download, such as bugs for cats, things like that. They just love those things. You Another big trick uh, that I use is you want to use other cats and people to show the feral that they are safe and that you can be trusted. Uh, show them that you're of pride or a family and that they are being welcomed by all. Also make uh, sure that the cat is used to female and male voices. Uh, that'll definitely help uh, avoid any issues later if you're uh, trying to get them adopted or uh, so forth when you have company. You want to Basically, let the friendly cats that you have just go up to the kennel and see how they react to the feral and vice versa. Uh, try and play with them and love on the other cats in front of the feral so that they can watch the interactions. Don't get a lot of eye contact. And if you do, same as before, just blink slowly and look away casually. Uh, also, have your friends and family interact with the cat by talking sweet, trying to play, maybe giving the cat treats. Uh, any human interaction uh, can be positive here. And 
the last and final、uh, trick and tip that I'll have for you is just don't rush the process. You know, just understand you'll probably get discouraged or frustrated. Just please don't give up. Uh, you are their only hope in this cruel world, and the end result will be so worth it for everyone.、Uh, some of these cats have been severely traumatized by humans and abused badly.、Uh, they might take different time frames to overcome that PTSD, but I've been taming feral cats for almost twenty years now, and they always come around. Trust me, every cat will come around in time.、Uh, just don't give up. And remember again, you're their only hope.、Uh, make sure you interact several times with the feral in rehab, even if it's just dropping a treat, saying hello as you pass by. Give the cat a name and say it often. Talk sweet and nice. Just avoid loud sounds like kids and vacuum for the first couple of weeks. And just keep giving it love. Keep trying to pet it. Keep trying to play until that magical day that the cat comes around and trusts you, and finally comes to you for attention. You will just melt, and it'll all be so worth it. You'll have saved a life, and for all that、uh, effort, we thank you, and we truly love you.、Um, we will have more in-depth videos coming on taming feral cats, including introducing new cats into your home and other fun cat topics. But until next time, from everybody here at Cat Life, we want to thank you for your support and for helping us build the world's largest cat sanctuary. You are part of our cat family, and even Peanut the dog thanks you. Goodbye, everyone.